Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm delighted to greet you in the matters and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for a brand new day. Can you believe that time is filled, as the hymnologist says, with swift transition? None on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hope on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hands. We have reached the 27th day of the seventh month of the year. Let's give God praise, honor, and glory. If you've made it through this pandemic season thus far, I remember like it was yesterday, March the 15th, which was the third Sunday, we had to close the doors of this church, but God has been good. And as of this Sunday, really the first Sunday in August, we would have been open for in-person services for an entire year. I don't know about you, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, I've got to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory for he's worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. Okay, some notices and announcements very, very quickly. Um, because time is filled with swift transition and because time is moving so rapidly, I want to share with you that Scholarship Sunday, which was scheduled for this Sunday, August 1 is actually the first Sunday in August. That Sunday has been, that Scholarship Sunday will be rescheduled for next Sunday. We'll have it on August the 8th. So all of our college recipients, um, please be in place for the second Sunday. I'm encouraging you, if you can, to be in worship for our in-person services so that we can present to you your scholarship. I want to um, encourage all of our young people to continue um, to pursue your education. A mind is a terrible thing to waste and we want to continue to invest in you. I want to ask those of you who can make sacrificial gifts to our scholarship fund that you will do so. Um, one of the challenges that we've had, especially in this pandemic season, is with the volatility of the market going up and down. Of course, now with this new Delta variant on the upsurge and with things having to close yet again, um, it is causing the market to act in an erratic way and so I don't know exactly what our resources will be in terms of our investments. And so we certainly need your support. So I hope that you will do that. I want to encourage our young people um, to help us um, to be present, certainly for Scholarship Sunday. And then I want to encourage those of you who have not been vaccinated um, to consider getting the vaccine. There's so much what they call vaccine hesitancy. We do know that young people are becoming ill as a result of this new Delta variant. We know that um, unvaccinated people are greatly at risk. Um, we know, yes, that um, there has been some breakthrough for those who have been vaccinated, so we understand that. But we also understand that you are safer um, if you should um, become infected. Um, that it would not be as severe as if you are not. And so I follow the data, I follow the science, and it's my desire that we will continue to be safe. We will continue to practice social distancing here at the church. We'll continue to wear masks. It was my hope that we'd be able to open up more now, but I think that we have to continue to take every precaution. But God has been good. Now listen, God also gives us wisdom. The Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. So I hope that you will continue to be supportive. Um, the James A. Thornton Club, the Jack Club, they will be having a fish fry on the first Saturday in August, August the 7th, you want to be at that fish fry. Um, we're going to have it in a parking lot. The men, um, they are planning um, for the 21st a picnic with wonderful food and drink and fellowship that we can have as we continue um, to celebrate and try to be together in the summertime. So we want to support the men in their endeavor. All right, 
um, thank you so much. That Those are Nose's announcements. Let me um, move to the word. Um, I want to, you know, yesterday we talked about the death of Jesus. We talked about the death of Jesus, but we also realized that when Jesus was about to be crucified and he felt abandoned by everyone, even his father, he cries out, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? We talked about the importance of always holding on to Jesus, no matter what, do not lose your connection with Jesus Christ. Even in the darkest moments, he's there. When you cannot see him, you can still trust him. And then we shared with you that we need not worry because our victory is assured. And even if death should come, we know that it is not the end, especially for those of us who love God. But when we look at the life and the burial and the death of Jesus Christ, we know that Resurrection Sunday will come. Look, you may be going through a dark moment right now, but I want you to know that Resurrection Sunday is coming, that God is going to lift you out of that state of depression, out of that state of despair, that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we are able to ask or think. And so I want us to look at the death of Jesus the Christ. And I want you to understand that it's good to have some friends that will be there for you in spite of, and it's good to live your life in such a way that no matter what, even in the darkest moment, that you leave a testimony for Jesus the Christ, for the centurion who was standing by when he saw that Jesus had been crucified, pierced in the side, which he did with his own sword, and the sky turned dark, and the moon turned as red as his own precious blood. The centurion was gripped as a result of the power of God. He looked up and said, surely, truly, this must be the Son of God. Let's look now at Mark's Gospel, chapter 15, starting with verse 42. It reads as follows. It was preparation day. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, he was a member of the Sanhedrin council who had consulted together to kill Jesus, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Here was Joseph because he was convicted and now he had no fear, not even of Pilate, who was the authority in those days. I don't know what's going on with this Republican party. They continue to be afraid of Donald Trump. But Joseph Arimathea went bravely to Pilate. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead, that Jesus was dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. Now, there was a centurion who was at the cross and it pierced him in the side. And he confirmed that Jesus had died. He said, when he learned from centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. Listen, we are saved by the blood of Jesus and by the testimony of the saints. And so both Joseph of Arimathea and the centurion were convicted and were changed in the darkest moment for Jesus. Listen, my friends, if you can hold on, you don't know how you're holding on to your faith can bless somebody else. And in the meantime, God will turn it around and bless you too. And so Joseph, the Bible says in verse 46, bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, placed it in a tomb, cut out of the rock. This was Joseph's own tomb 
that he gave to Jesus. When you love somebody, in spite of the dark moment that they may face in their life, you don't abandon them, but you hold on. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the mother of Joseph, or Jose, saw where he was laid. Recap, because tomorrow we're going to get to the resurrection. So we've done the death of Jesus. This is the burial of Jesus. And you know what? Some things need to be buried. Maybe we need to bury depression. We need to bury fear. We need to bury anxiety. We need to bury darkness. We need to bury depression. We need to bury all those things that are not like Jesus. Here, Jesus is buried. But we already know. Sometimes when I'm reading a book, I'll go to the end just to see what the end is going to be. We already know the ending of the story, and I want you to know that in your dark moment, just hold on because there is a bright side somewhere. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. God bless you. Recap, hold on to God. Even when it's dark, hold to his unchanging hands. Pray that God will give you some good friends because Joseph Arimathea was converted as a result of how Jesus handled his pain, his suffering, and his dying, as was a centurion. And then we're going to wait because Isaiah was right. Has I not known? Has I not heard? The everlasting Father giveth power to the might and to them that have no strength. He increases strength. Even the youth will be weary and young men will utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They're mounted with the wings of eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. Let me go ahead and greet some of you. Um, I had so much to say today. Let me just see who is with me. Call somebody. Let them know we'll be on tomorrow as well. Um, Natalie, how are you? Miss Anne Hamid, how are you? Mary Joseph, how are you? Maxine, thank you always for your inspirational messages. Angela Kelly, how are you? Good to see you. Brenda, how are you? Hazel Best, Kay Warman. How are you? I wrote you a note today. Virginia Chainer, Sister Deborah Dunham, Cara Dan Glade, I continue to pray for you. You know that God is able. It was good to see you on Sunday. Good to see you. Um, let's see who. Shirley Millard, how are you? Good to see you. Annie, I'm going to give you a call when I can. You can um, inbox me your number again. I'll try to call you today. That's my um, cousin from um, North Carolina. Well, let's continue to pray for one another. Understand that God blesses us to, in fact, be a blessing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word that speaks to us even in those dark moments, even in the midst of the crucifixion of our Lord and even in his burial, we can see the light of your power and of your love. And as we continue to negotiate this pandemic and as trials and tribulation come, help us, O oh God, to continue to hold to your unchanging hands. We want to thank you, O oh God, as Mahalia Jackson would say, for how you brought us. We want to thank you for how you kept us. We want to thank you that you've never left us. O oh God, give us such a faith that will not shrink nor tremble or complain, but in times of grief, and pain will lean upon our God. Thank you for being with us in spite of. I want to thank you for touching my own body. I want to thank you for traveling mercies. Pray for our students as they prepare to return to school, that you protect them, build a hedge around them, keep them from hurt, harm, and danger. Bless those that are sick and shut in, those that have problems that are too big for them. We don't come to tell you how big our problems are, but we tell our problems how big our God is. God, we love you, we praise you, honor you, and we give you glory. Hear our prayer now, incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank you so much. Um, you know that I love you more than my limited vocabulary um, can express. Let's continue to pray for one another. Listen, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men and women what God has in store for those who love him. 
I hear the Apostle Paul declaring, I am confident of this very thing, that he has begun a good work in you and he has begun a good work in me, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Good to be with you today. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Let's receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love, and you're going in and then you're going out, and you're down sitting and then you're uprising until we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you. See you tomorrow at the same time.